You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q chiming with you on podcast 193. That's right, 193 on the podcast. And uh, this game, this podcast, will be breaking down the stats, facts. We'll have interviews from Coach L. Gentry, Coach, I mean, Coach L. Gentry, and GM Dale Demps among a multitude of topics but before we get started we always throughout the season give props and those props my friend they go to you to the supporters the people who donate the people who share the show and all you fantastic people out there that show love to the pelican post game report now with that said we're gonna move into the rundown and of course like i said we'll be covering the Pelicans in season show. Of course, it's the end of the season show. And we'll be covering uh, pretty much the interviews from Coach L. Gentry, GM Dale Demps, his thoughts going into free agency. And we'll also have a few topics that we won't cover today. DeMarcus Cousins return. Is this a question mark that does he come back? A lot of stuff going on out there. We'll get into it. Do we resign Rajon Rondo, Ian Clark, among others? What do we need to do to move ahead to make the team better? You know, and of course, we'll mention some free agents of sorts to kind of break down and tell you who could really help this team. You know, of course, I always give my point. So but let's get right on into it. Now, of course, the Pelicans finished what is considered should be considered by many fans as a very good season. They flip flopped from what they were last year, a decimal team to a playoff club with a potential MVP. Obviously, I think he's got the defensive player of the year award locked up. That's just my perception. But as far as the MVP race, to be quite honest with you, he put in a hell of a bid. But I think this would be more James Harden's ward, being that his team progressed a little further. His team won more games. He, uh, he actually averaged more than AD. James Harden had clearly an MVP uh, throughout the regular season. And Houston, just for many stretches, looked like they were just walking through the rest of the teams. You know, so, I, I you know, I, I, I got AD had a spectacular year. But in, in fairness, and a lot of you people out there would say that James Harden probably deserves the regular season MVP more than Anthony Davis does. That's just, you know, my vantage point on it. But AD is the guy, man. Building around him is the key. Of course, Andy Davis has a couple years left on his contract. We got DeMarcus Cousins coming in. And uh, it's a lot of flim flam and foolishness, rigmarole, whatever you want to call it, that's out there saying that we don't need the all-star big man. Well, we're going to discount that absolute nonsense. But before we get into any of the heavy topics dealing with the Pelicans, uh, such as DeMarcus Cousins, the potential signings of Ray John Rondo, Ian Clark, those guys coming back to help the team, and what we need to move ahead. Let's first talk to L. Gentry, See, hear his thoughts uh, at the uh, end of the season. Here we go. No, just to reflect a little bit on the uh, uh, season, uh, obviously it was, uh, <clears throat> it was a disappointment all, uh, overall. Uh, it was extremely tough uh, at the start, you know, because of the you know, not having Drew in the Drew situation, and it's kind of one of those things that you you can't do anything about. And uh, in his case, it was really disappointing because it was the first time where you know he was going to be really healthy and be able to go to training camp and get through it. And then obviously the family situation came up, and that will always be be first. And if anyone uh, know the Bensons and how they operate, uh, it was going to be a situation where they were going to allow Drew. Uh, time to decide, you know, what was best for him to come back. And, 
and that's exactly what happened. So, uh, you know, we started right behind the eight ball again, and, uh, you know, getting Drew back, obviously we played good basketball and uh, uh, really kind of fell into a situation where I thought we were playing, you know, uh, well enough that we were going to be a playoff team, and and then uh, some injuries here and there, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, obviously we made the trade for uh, Cousins and, and that's like a whole nother season. You know, you got to try to make adjustments for him, and he's got to try to make adjustments. And, and by the way, I thought he, he went out of his way to try to do everything he possibly could to make this work. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we played well, and then obviously at the end, not having those guys out there, uh, you know, we struggled the last four games. But uh, up until then, I thought we were playing really good basketball. And I think you can see that those two guys can work together, and I think they can be very effective together. With that, I'll take any questions anyone has. Alvin, how much are you going to have to change, or will you have to change, in the offseason how you all play? Did you have to kind of throw it together there on the fly? And will you change it all? No, I, I don't think we're going to have to change that much. Uh, you know, he is a. You know, if, you, if you're speaking of DeMarcus and how we're going to integrate him into what we're doing, you know, he's a very, very talented guy. He has the ability to step out on the floor. Uh, he's an excellent passer. Uh, you know, shoots, you know, thir almost 36% from three. So uh, all of those things are things that, uh, that, that we were just adding a player that could do the things that we wanted him to do anyway. You know, and I, uh, we, we talked along the lines of, uh, you know, he had – uh, nagging injuries here and there. So, you know, to me, the only thing that he has to do uh, coming back in to, to make it work and fit in is just, you know, to be physically in great shape from a conditioning standpoint, and I think he'll do that. Oh, I think we added some, you know, uh, uh, high-low situations. Uh, which uh, both those guys are very, very capable of uh, posting up, or both of those guys are very capable of throwing the ball inside to the other. Uh, so I, I think those kind of situations work. I think, uh, uh, you know, we also incorporated a few things like on free throw situations, already putting him down there where it puts a lot of pressure on the defense where you can throw the ball right into him before any double teams and anything happens. So uh, there are some things that we'll continue to work on. But all in all, I think that uh, he's a talented enough guy. You know, I mean, he's, you know, in my opinion, he's the he's the best player at this position in the league. So. Uh, what pieces do you think this team is missing to protect that next Well, I, I think we have to be able to shoot the ball consistently because obviously those guys are going to create double team situations. Uh, and when that happens, in order to, you know, to alleviate the double teams, you're going to have to be able to knock down shots. So uh, we got to be able to shoot it consistently, and not really from three. Just got we got we got to be able to shoot it consistently from the perimeter, uh, in order to take away the double teams. And uh, if we can do that, uh, then I think we'll be fine. I think we got to get uh, more consistent in in our in our play. Uh, especially down the stretch, uh, execution and things like that. I think we got to be a little better than we were uh, this year at that, where, you know, we're making plays, uh, and especially at home. You know, and if you look around this league, all the teams that have – That's Coach you know, L. Gentry, rates. man, and this, that's about four, maybe in four and a half minutes worth of L. Gentry's commentary from a 27, maybe 28-minute press conference at the end of the season. Now, at the earlier in the season, I rode Coach Gentry pretty hard, you know, about uh, the way he was doing things in the two prior seasons, the disastrous two first seasons culminated with various injuries. Uh, and those guys, butts were on the line, both him and D Dale, Dale Jemps, obviously the general manager slash uh, VP of basketball operations. They had to do something. They had to do something. There was an ultimatum issued at the end of the last season. When, uh, of course, then Tom Benson gave them, thought about it for a while, for a while before they got word to say, you know what? We evaluated things. We're going to stick with these guys for at least one more year to see how it turned out. Well, anyway, it was a good call because the Pelicans finished the season 48 and 34. They basically flip flopped what they were from the previous year. So a huge win differential. Uh, for the team, they made the necessary moves. They trade, they 
turn. You got rid of certain coaches, added coaches. Chris Finch might not get a lot of the, the credit, but Chris Finch, his acquisition to the team to teach Demps as well as AD and DeMarcus Cousins and the rest of the team how to run an offense with two bigs that basically do the same thing. Top center in the league, DeMarcus, top power forward in the game, four, whatever you want to call him, Andy Davis. Top top of the notch. To have these two guys to play together on the floor at the same time, it took some struggling. It really did until it finally started to make sense. Then when Cousins went down, of course, they exploded. You know, we can't say enough about Dale Demps. We're going to play some Demps uh, later on in the podcast as well as he talks about it. But, man, they were excellent. The Pelicans were excellent, man, this season. They played. They were extremely talented. Uh, points per game, they averaged almost 112 points a game. You know, they finished with 44 and a half rebounds per game. That's good for 10th. Those that 112, by the way, is uh, good for third in the NBA in points per game. They were all they averaged about 27 points, uh, 27 assists per game, which is third in the NBA. So let's get this straight. You had 112 a game. That's third in the NBA. You had 44.3 rebounds per game. That's 10th in the NBA. You had 26.8, might as well average it at 27 assists per game. That's third in the NBA. And then, of course, they allowed 110.4 points a game. That's 29th in the NBA. So, obviously, the defense need to to improve for the Pelicans, for them to really take the next step. The offense is there. If they can somehow hold that and that becomes a steady, then they focus on the defensive side of things to improve their standing. And I don't see why they can't challenge teams like Houston and Golden State once they get that issue straight. We're not talking about a dramatic shift to the top 10 points allowed. That'll be terrific. But even if they can get into the top 20, you know, that could really help their standing as well if they can maintain a top three uh, points per game offensively. So a lot of comeuppance to be uh, given out. L Gentry held the team together when they lost to Marcus Cousins. Also, the death of Tom Benson was in there as well. And the team used that as strength to to galvanize and plumb Portland in the first round, sweep them and go into a, uh, well, a five-court, a five-game battle, if you want to call it that, with Golden State, in which they blew out Golden State in one game here. But, you know, the New Orleans fans, basketball fans, Pelicans fans, had an opportunity to, to experience NBA basketball for the first time in a while. First time in a while. And we got a taste of that, and we love playoff basketball in the Big Easy. Let me tell you especially after the Saints did what they did, then have the Pelicans to do what they did. Both sides of these guys, but we're talking Pelicans right now, need to be, be, be very proud of themselves on how they handle things. No, no doubt about it. But anyway, let's, get, let's move on into it. Now, we're going to talk about some of these topics. You know, we're here to talk about DeMarcus Cousins. He's saying that he'd be, he's shooting for, to be ready by training camp. The rigmarole about whether or not he should come back. A lot of foolishness. Just reporters trying to figure out a way to – to sell papers or to get attention because it it didn't maybe, maybe not because he did uh, not follow, you know, disfollow, whatever you want to unfollow the Pelicans thing. And he said a little commentary about it. We'll have to get into all that kind of stuff. You know, that ain't really deep basketball stuff. We're going to keep it mainstream anyway, but DeMarcus cousins, obviously right now wants a new contract, wants a new contract and the Pelicans, you know, have to decide on whether or not how they're going to handle this. Now, they did say they wanted him back, but there, there's something out there. They're leaving a little too much out there for you to ponder. Like, okay, we ain't going to totally surprise them here. But if, say perchance, uh, DeMarcus Cousins wants a ridiculous sum of money, then we're not going to uh, pay that. The bottom line is if DeMarcus Cousins was healthy, the Pelicans probably wouldn't have not traded for Nikolai Meritage. Matter of fact, they wouldn't have. They would have just kept what they have. So, you know, the Pelicans, in a weird kind of way, they, they, they did get better by subtraction. A weird kind of way. They lose to Marcus. Dale Dempsey gets on the wire. He gives up the first round draft pick, gets rid of the hideous contract that he signed with Amir Asik, got that out the room. Now Solomon Hill's contract is the albatross now in the room. And I think he'll probably get that fixed, too, 
this offseason. I wouldn't be against giving that kind of money to Nikolai Meritage. So, I mean, like I said, the Pelicans, on the other hand, have done a splendid job. Now, the question is, now that the season is behind us, DeMarcus Cousins is the big story here. Do we get DeMarcus Cousins back? Do we sign him back to that amount of money? A lot of people say, yeah, but at the right price. Let me tell you something. If he hits free agency, he goes out to free agency. I know we got, I know we got his bird rights. But the reality at the end of the day is, if you, DeMarcus, if you let the market decide DeMarcus Cousins' value, it's probably going to be pretty pricey. Because a lot of teams already put their hat in the ring for him. Phoenix is one of those teams that said they're going to max him out. We don't care. But there are the guys that were instrumental. Rajon Rondo, Ian Clark, perhaps Jordan Crawford. Those guys might, you want to get a sniff at them as well. But anyway, we'll cover those topics and other topics. We'll get that L, the uh, coach Dale Demps, uh, coach GM Dale Demps interview on the side of the break. Stay with us. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report, season ending edition. Now, of course, the prior Pelican Post Game Report we covered, we talked about, we put the, the ends and issues on the regular season, postseason. Now, we head into the offseason. What we gonna do here? We got quite a few questions, big questions. Demarcus Cousins is one of them. Ray John Rondo is another one. Two key players to what potentially could be a championship roster. I said championship. When is the last time we ever put the Pelicans in the mix for an NBA championship? They put the league on notice this year. They really did with the fantastic play. Let's not leave out Ian Clark as well, who was absolutely. It was absolutely tearing people apart. I mean, he was not, he was absolutely awesome this year off the bench and playing basically uh, for a very cheap deal. Now, Rondo and Clark are both cousin guys. Both of those guys came to the Pelicans because of the influence of DeMarcus Cousins, who put on his GM hat uh, prior to the previous season to recruit those guys for cheap deals. Rondo have a three uh, odd million dollar one year deal. Ian Clark got half of that, 1.57. Also, you had Jordan Clark in there, who uh, the Pelicans had and released and they brought back. You know, I think Jordan Crawford is another guy potentially that you could look at with his scoring power, his punch off the bench. 
But the Pelicans, man, looking at it moving forward, um, we talked about the fact that Anthony Davis obviously is the star of the team. DeMarcus Cousins, uh, you know, you watch the end of the season press conference on, on, on these guys, like after the playoffs, and of course they were, you know, a bit emotionally drained after all that grueling playoff battle, emotional battle, and, and they finally got a well-rested uh, time to sit down and, you know, kind of re- reheave, you know, get, 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 you know, get back together. I'm not sure uh, about some of the comments that uh, some of the big guys on the Pelican squad made about the situation. Now, mostly some guys said we would like to have DeMarcus Cousins back. Some guys just stay out of it and say, of course, we want him back. But the real, you know, but those guys don't write the checks. You know, those guys don't make those heavy decisions. It's Dale Demps. He does. And it's up to him whether or not we bring back Rajon Rondo. We bring back Ian Clark. We, of course, re-sign DeMarcus Cousins because that's another issue, another thing that this team has to deal with. Well, before we get into playing uh, GM Dale Dempsey's comments on the end of the season uh, and going into the offseason, uh, the draft and free agency, which is going to be a loaded free agency and a very deep draft. Too bad we don't have a, uh, any picks uh, in the first round. I'm not sure about the second round, though. But DeMarcus Cousins, obviously the big guy uh, that's on the roster for the, for the Pelicans, he averaged 25 points a game, about 13 rebounds, and five and a half assists on the season. Rajon Rondo, in his 12th year, he finished up averaging about eight points a game, eight assists per game, and four rebounds a game for Rajon Rondo. Ian Clark finished averaging seven and a half points a game on the season. Pretty good numbers for those guys. And Jordan Crawford had uh, about six and a half a game, 6.6 to be accurate. Those guys were pretty productive off the bench when they got when they did get the opportunities to go in there and play. Uh, too bad, you know, um, for the most part that Jordan Crawford didn't have an, an opportunity to play as much as he did. But anyway, before we get into breaking down what we think will happen, let's listen to let's let's go ahead and take a listen to Dale Demps, the GM and uh, vice president <laughs> of basketball operations. That's my wife. <laughs> That was her saying, I'm going to thank my wife <laughs> for all the support that she's given me this year and putting up with me. So, but now she's been awesome, so I want to thank her. And so thank you. <laughs> I really do want to thank her, really. I, I appreciate everything. Uh, and I want to thank the Bensons. Um, you know, and I think back on the year and all the support from them over the years. And I just really wish Mr. B um, could have been there for, you know, game one in the playoffs versus Portland. And uh, just to see that environment, you know, I know he's looking for him from above and, you know, he's got to be thrilled and uh, he, he's really missed. And, you know, Mrs. Benson, um, she's been incredible. She's been an inspiration, um, you know, traveling with the team and coming in, not only in the good times, she comes in in the bad times. And that's awesome. And um, she, like, it's just been fun having her around. And uh, I think the guys really enjoyed it. I know we really enjoyed it as a staff and um, coaching staff. Um, and she, she's been awesome. And uh, we, we know that's going to continue. And she, she's so passionate about the team. That's my phone now. <laughs> so uh, got to uh, turn that off there. And then also want to thank uh, Mickey and Dennis for their support over the years. They, they've been awesome working with those guys and um, being supported and having them having, having that feeling that people believe in you and believe in the vision and working together with them has been great. Um, Alvin and our coaches, they were they were phenomenal this year. I thought that, you know, we went through so many times of adversity this year, and um, they just kept a positive attitude and kept the guys going and kept, kept coming up with plan after plan and ideas and options, and I, I thought it was phenomenal. Um, and then our medical group, you know, I want to really make sure I send a shout out to them because one of the most important things in this league is having health. And, you know, uh, Drew played 81 games this year. Um, he missed one game because of the flu. Um, we got to get a better flu shot, I guess. But, uh, you know, Anthony played 75, and um, I think Etwan and Darius played all 82. And having guys healthy this year, it's, it's been big. And so I want to make sure I thank Misty and his group, you know, Jared, um, Dwayne, um, Jason, Mike G, Todd, all those guys did a phenomenal job, Michael Ruffin, of getting the guys ready. And um, that, that, that was big for us this year. Um, and, you know, next, I, I kind of want to talk about the season. 
you know, it really started for us around this time last year. You know, we had a lot of meetings, a lot of planning. And, you know, then you go into free agency and, you know, you, you, you acquire players. And then, you know, we had a lot of meetings in July and in August and coming up with a plan. And, you know, we added Chris Finch uh, to our group, who, who's phenomenal. And working with him, you know, we're going to put in some new things, you know, with having DeMarcus and Anthony. And we knew the first 20 games, it was going to be kind of a, you know, shortened training camp this year. The first 20 games was going to really kind of give us an idea of where we were headed. And I, I thought, you know, we were just finding our way. And, you know, the team started playing well, uh, you know, right all the way up until, you know, you, you think about the DeMarcus injury. I, I think, you know, when the season first started, you know, we were finding our way. We had some games I thought we could have won, had some games we lost, uh, some games that we lost. I mean, we won and we could have lost. You know, I think it went both ways. But, you know, I felt like we had just started to find our way right around the time when DeMarcus was injured. You know, I think we had won seven to nine, something like that, and the team had just hit a stride. And then the injury came. Um, and, you know, I give our coaches a lot of credit. You know, you know, we, we recognized what happened. Um, they came up with another plan. Um, and, you know, you have to give the players a lot of credit for, in, for, for implementing that new plan. And we had, to, we had to change the way we played. You know, we had, we had lost five or six, and that was really the moment of truth for us. And, you know, I remember the game um, against the Nets it was a really interesting game. Uh, we said we just lost five or six, and we had a really big lead in that game, and then we gave that lead away, and then the game ended up going into overtime. And the fight of those guys was unbelievable. Um, you know, just the way the guys played hard and uh, just the competing, um, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I saw, you know, that was the game when I was like, man, the way these guys really competed, it, it we just really built off of that game, I felt like. And um, then, you know, the rest of the way, you know, the, the resilience of our group um, coming out, playing, um, competing every night, it, it was really fun to watch. It was really fun to be a part of. And even some games that we lost, you know, we always felt like we played the right way and we had the right spirit. And that's really a credit that, you know, has to start with our, our, our coaching staff and then and our players. And watching the guys battle was, was, was especially down the stretch, um, you know, so many important games. That's just GM Bill Demps, vice president uh, finally did arrive of basketball playoffs. operations. Uh, now, before I talk about uh, GM Dale Demps, um, let me just say that I was, we, we were currently, if it's a slight bit of echo, uh, extra echo you might hear, is we're moving out of our old studio into a new studio. So uh, please just uh, forgive us for that. Uh, and I, as far as Dale Demps is concerned, you know, let's, first of all, a lot of people don't know too much about Dale Demps. You know, I did some research on Dale and found out that he's a Louisiana guy. He was born in Shreveport. That's big. Uh, and for a Shreveport guy to climb all the way up from, you know, he played basketball as well. You know, he went to college. He played basketball. Uh, I think he played semi-pro. I think he had an opportunity in the NBA too. And he climbed up through the ranks through San Antonio and whatnot. And up until the general manager and vice uh, president of basketball operations with the New Orleans Pelicans, that's a feat within itself. A lot of people not really writing articles about that climb, but that's inspirational. I just wanted to share that, guys. But this guy's come a long way and earned his comeuppance to sit in that seat. And the Pelicans have been real patient with Dale Demps. They believe in him, even when a lot of people, including myself, was destroying him the last couple of years because I personally didn't like the moves that he was making. But it he believed in himself, and he's seen a vision of the team. And, of course, finally, the team – reached you know got to that portion of that vision now he made some very interesting points about uh, demarcus cousins of course but if anybody's gonna make a decision to bring those guys back you just heard the man that's gonna do it in part you know uh, you know he has the power to do it the great thing about the pelicans is the fact that you know we're not really working with a lot of cap coming in this season so obviously i think some of the things is they're going to probably uh, if they wanted DeMarcus Cousins wrapped up, they would have had a deal done before the end of the year, uh, before the end of the season. Like most teams do when they want to wrap their people up, they get the deal done during the season so it don't be something they worry about. Obviously, the Pelicans are going to let the market dictate DeMarcus Cousins' value. And, of course, they own his bird rights, meaning they can extra, they can give him that extra year more than anybody else could. 
And in the long run, with all this rigmarole back and forth, they're going to decide with his injury whether or not that he obviously would. He's a max player, you know, putting up 25 and 13 a game last year for the Pelicans in those games when he played he, in the 48 games that he played. He was stellar. No doubt about it. But when it comes down to it, the Pelicans are going to be smart about what money DeMarcus gets. He might not get the 25, 30 million he gets. He might end up with some, you know, the 30 million that he might want, the max deal. Pelicans might end up giving him the 25. At the end of the day, it's no scenario unless DeMarcus Cousins demands to be out of here, which I just, I don't see. He loves the city. It's close by from where he grew up. And I think he found a home down here and he wants to be here along with Anthony Davis. Those guys just make their basketball lives a lot easier when you have those two big guys on the the court at the same time. And so that's my call. Obviously, to me, DeMarcus Cousins will be here. Now, with the contract, it looked like that's a whole nother question, maybe 26, 27 a year. He might say, I want 30 million. The Pelicans might say, well, we'll give you 25 or 24 or 26 perhaps somewhere along in there. But in the end, I think that the the DeMarcus Cousins stuff is just hype and he will ultimately sign a three or four year deal to come back to New Orleans and compete with Anthony Davis, who has a couple of years left on his contract as well. So now as far as Rajon Rondo's concerned, he talked about Rajon Rondo. It was times that Rondo wasn't out there. Rondo played 65 games this year, uh, 26 minutes a game. He averaged eight points a game, eight assists per game. And he was actually stellar. Now, he returns next year. He'll be 30. You know, he'll be coming upon 32 years old. He'll be approaching his 13th year in the NBA. It's definitely doable. He played for three million this year. I don't see why the Pelicans would not consider bringing Rajon Rondo back because of what he means from a coat on court coaching. If it wasn't for Rajon Rondo in many of these games, the Pelicans would no shape and form been able to get to where they got if it wasn't for his leadership and his vision. He is very important. I'm not going to say as important as DeMarcus Cousins, but he is equally as important as having DeMarcus Cousins because he sees the floor. He's a champion. And those guys will learn a lot. That team is better if they have Rajon Rondo on it. So I would say the Pelicans, maybe give him a two year deal, maybe another year deal similar to what he got. I would, you know, I know he's 32, uh, but I would like give Rondo a, you know, a, a deal, maybe a couple of years. You know, you have a couple of guys coming up, but Rajon Rondo's important, you know, in to the to the team. Ian Clark's another guy. Now, Ian Clark could be on the outside looking in. You know, I would love to have Ian Clark back. He played his way into a contract, but he's a he's a unrestricted free agent. So somebody else might bid. I think he'll be bidded out of our price range. I would love to Ian Clark, have Ian Clark come back, but Ian Clark is not gonna play play again for another one point five million. I mean, you really got him. Uh, last year on the back end of free agency where you was able to get the guy uh, for cheap, really cheap. I don't know if they, I don't, I don't expect, I think he played himself into a pretty decent contract based upon, he was better than a lot of these guys that's coming off the bench. That's making more money. So why not Ian Clark championship experience with the golden state warriors a year ago. He's a terrific come off the bench, hit big shots, play defense. He was spectacular late in the season, kind of, Started a little slow, but man, when he got rolling, he got rolling. The confidence was there. He was hitting those shots, especially in that Portland series. He was he was a gamer in that series. And of course, Jordan Crawford, Crawford, he's another guy that uh, possibly I'm not certain about Jordan Crawford. If I had to guess of any of the four guys I just mentioned that more than likely probably wasn't going to make it back to the team. Jordan Crawford would probably be a guy that I say, well, he probably won't be the guy that they bring back, you know, at the start of next year, possibly he could be a guy that the team sees, you know, if they experiencing problems depth wise, injury wise, like before, and they'll say, okay, well, let's look at what uh, Jordan Crawford can do for us. But you're looking at other guys on the team, Frank Jackson, who's going to come off that injury that he's had and make, uh, and, and probably make some contributions as well. Nikolai Meritich, uh, he has that $12.5 million dollar, uh, 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 kicker in his deal that he wants. He'll be making 12.5 next year. And of course, the real thing about, you know, looking at the team's interests is, and the way I'm mentioning it like this is because the Pelicans, if you look at them and we followed, like I said, we followed this team all season long prior to that. And what I see about the Pelicans is the fact that they're a small team outside Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, you know, they're a small team. If you go to the bench, there are no seven footers, six, nine, six, eight guys coming off the bench. 
they're undersized. You have uh, the smallest small forward in the history of the NBA basketball and Ian Thomas, Ian Clark, excuse me. No, no, Etwan Moore, excuse me. Etwan Moore is the smallest small forward in the history of basketball, standing at 6'3", 6'4", uh, what, 200 something pounds, playing De- LeBron James and matching up with guys like Kevin Durant. That's, uh, that's absolutely absurd. You know, you're going to have to try to find somebody who has the three point shooting ability as well as the length to be able to play that three. You got to do better than that, you know, and allow Etwan Moore to come off the bench in a proper position because he would be a really good guy to come off the bench. He could play one or two from you under the bench and let him guard the one or two guys. It was crazy. We had Etwan Moore the entire season playing that small forward. Uh, and he's six three, six four, and you have him guarding guys that's six seven, six eight, six nine, seven feet tall, and guys that are thirty to forty pounds heavier than him. Even if there's a more or, or any kind of award that you can give each one more for what he did this year, they need to give him an award for what he did this year. He got his butt kicked playing, got, going against LeBron James, Kevin Durant, all those ter- tremendous small forwards out there, those three spot guys. He was just outmatched every night. The smallest guy in the NBA competing with those guys, those giants. And he did admirably. I have to give it up to Etwan Moore for this season, man. That was a tough season for Etwan Moore. But he was stellar. He stepped up and met it. Now, the length position. Obviously, you have Ray John Rondo, he's 6'1". You got Drew Holiday, who really rose to a whole nother level. We are, I just hope and pray that, jo- that Drew Holiday can bring what he became in the 2018 season, you know, the 2017, 2018 season into the 2018, 2019 season and build on it. Cause that would, that guy there that blew up after the DeMarcus cousins injury and became what he was. If you can bring that guy along with cousins and how, and an MVP style, Anthony Davis, the sky's the limits for the Pelicans. You just need to fill in guys around them. Now, size is the thing you concentrate. Now, when they met guys like uh, big Zach Randolph, remember guys when they played the Sacramento Kings and the Kings beat them a couple of times and Zach Randolph had these big games against them and you'll get these power forwards, these girthy power forwards that'll just uh, abuse the Pelicans in the paint. Those type of guys, remember those type of guys? Well, those type of guys the Pelicans need to get somebody, a girthy guy that can come off the bench. They need another. They need some size. They need six, nine, six, ten, six, eleven guys that can maybe play the center position, play the five, maybe play the four that can run the court. They need they need uh, they need that type of guy. Maybe they can seek out via trade. I know we got Nikolai Miritich, but with DeMarcus Cousins resign, Anthony Davis, Nikolai Miritich obviously is going to play the small forward position. That solves the small forward position. Darius Miller off the bench. Uh, e, 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 Twine Moore there off the bench as well. Rajon Rondo is starting. You got Ian Clark possibly coming back. We got to see what Frank Jackson look like. You still got Shaq Diallo still developing. We still got a Mecca Oka for, for another year uh, on the bench. We still have DeAndre Liggins and those guys like that. But the interesting issue is the Pelicans really could use another could use a small four. They can use some length, maybe a four, a guy that can play the center position, a seven footer, maybe a couple of bigs, a six ten, six eleven guy that can play either center or power forward that can run the floor uh, for the Pelicans because they like to run. They like that pace. We don't need guys like Nick, like uh, uh, Alexis Jinka. And I like Alexis, but he's a big guy in the mold of Rudy Gobert. And you need bigs that can actually move like a Dwayne Detman type guy that could kind of move up and down the court that can run the court. We need size, defensive abilities, and I would say we can use another shooter or two. And now how they get that guy to a free agency, I don't know. But something has to give because now that we Nikolai Miritich is here, he'll be making 12.5. You look at the salaries up and down and you say, well, which one of these contracts don't belong here? He say, oh, Solomon Hill, Solomon Hill signed his deal. He's making eleven point seven million coming up. He's going to be making eleven. That's his base salary. Eleven point seven. You're going to have to do something with that. You know what I'm saying? Perhaps we can move Solomon out and get some cheap. It's, you, you, that's just going to be asinine. I, I don't think the Pelicans are going to go into next year. They're looking at Solomon Hill. Said we're going to have to some kind of way 
now that we got Nikolai Miritich here, we're going to have to do something with Solomon Hill and possibly move him out and kind of free up money so we can make some moves, maybe get another shooter with some length, get some big guys with some girth that can run the floor. Pelicans are not that far off. They're really not. Now, guys, like, will they compete for the big guys like like LeBron James and all these guys? I don't think so. I just think they need to just keep the core which they have together and add a few more pieces, a couple, maybe a three-point shooter or two, some bigs that are – got you know some seven foot big six eleven bids and i think they'll be fine i think they'll be fine but um that'll do it for the show Yo, today Pierre, people we like to thank y'all for joining the pelican post game report with the pro media network now of course like i said this is our playoff ending preview edition coming into the 2018 uh, 2019 season recapping the pelicans what they're gonna do in the free agency you know and, and that's my take on it. And I think they're not too far off. Keep that core together, build upon it, add a few more people. But anyway, outside of that, if you like a show, Sports Coma, the Pelican Post Game Report, and other podcasts that we Yo, present, Pierre, please go to our here? Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network and make a donation. Also, thank you for sharing our show. Please share our show. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Join our Facebook and face Facebook and Twitter as well. Thank you for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report tonight. Peace. Sports Talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the poshlifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P O S H L Y F E S T Y L E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational 
inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that wheat sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.